Add in the scared of county office. County office is scared of the parents. The parents are scared of the kids and the kids ain't scared of nobody. Boom, there it is. And if you don't know who that is, that's my new teacher, Bestie. I'm gonna be telling you a little bit more about her in a second. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. As you know, I am Cindy Lumpkin. I'm actually a teacher who left the classroom almost, what, 10 years ago now? Well, um, recently, for those of you who do follow me, you know I've been making lots of videos just geared towards teachers, talking about teachers leaving the classroom. Um, I did some videos on leaving the classroom guilt-free. Now. Today, I want to do some reflections on um, my new teacher, Bestie. Actually, I didn't know who she was until she came across one of my Facebook groups that I'm in that somebody recommend that we watched. And um, she's pretty amazing. Very, very funny teacher. But she's very popular on YouTube and is gaining lots and lots of steam on YouTube now because she has recently left teaching. She announced maybe about a week ago that she left the classroom yet again and her videos that she did really resonated with a lot of people. Now her channel is Honest Teacher Vibes. I really don't even know her name but I've been consuming a lot of her videos. It's just another example of a teacher who has been really fed up and she has said a lot of things that really resonated not only with me but many other teachers now i always put in this disclaimer i am not advocating for teachers to quit their jobs i'm not advocating for teachers to leave the classroom however for those teachers who feel it is best for them i wholeheartedly say it is okay and do what is best for you I believe the system, just like everything else, is going to all work out for the better. The one thing that I personally do advocate for is that there are so many teachers who, at the heart of who they are, they are educators. And so I advocate for those people to actually start their own schools. That's what I advocate for. And a lot of times teachers can't wrap their heads around that because they have been in a public setting or a more expensive private setting that has all the bells and whistles and serve hundreds and thousands of kids. That's not the types of schools that I'm talking about. I have a small accredited school that I've been running for eight years and it really checks off all the boxes that I want. Um, I left the school like system when it like I said when it wasn't very popular because I was tired of the way that I was personally um, treated and how I felt children with special needs were treated and I felt like I was more a part of the problem than I was a solution so for me when I got the option to leave I left because it just did not set my heart on fire to be there. However, I was able to start my own small school, still working with a lot of the kids from the urban city underserved area that I was working in. And so I found my little oasis. And as you can see, I'm not in the classroom right now. I actually decided to start my vacation a little earlier. Um, kind of sorta. Of. I didn't go in today, but I'm doing a lot of administrative stuff. And my husband saw me at the computer and he was like, Cindy, go and take a walk. So that's what I decided to do. And because I have not checked in with you guys this week, I decided to tell you about honest teacher vibes. So that quote at the beginning pretty much sums it up. Admin is afraid of county office. County office is afraid of the parents and the parents are afraid of the students and the students are afraid of no one. Yeah. I remember that, right? And um, But she goes on in that video to really say that she was going to start to use her platform for more teachers. And, you know, that's something that resonated with me because that's what I'm doing now, too. I feel even though my platform is not as big as hers, I still have the opportunity and the obligation to kind of share my story and my journey because I want to inspire more teachers to do what she did, to do what I do, if it suits you. And one of the things on this journey that I've really learned is that a lot of teachers have self-esteem issues or should I call career esteem issues. I don't think teachers realize how just how talented we are and how really everything all the skills that you learn as a teacher can really be retooled to get into this business sector to start businesses to be on social media once again me and my video on how to start a school like I wasn't even trying to like 
gain followers like YouTube for me because I felt like really lonely there's really nobody else in my space it was just kind of an outlet a hobby of sorts for me just documenting my journey and then I found this whole community of teachers who were like oh my god how did you do that could you tell me how to do that and from there like we have a group of over 600 teachers who are interested in starting the school. Some of them have already actively started. In fact, some of them are going to be opening next year and the following year. So like for me, it's, it's just kind of, I stumbled upon this, but now I realize like her, I have an opportunity to use my platform to inspire other people and to speak up for other people. And a part of what I want to do though, is to really just speak life into teachers and to tell them that they're, they are, our options. She does make the statement that not all teachers can leave their job, right? I, 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 I'm, I'm sad in my heart for the teachers that can't walk away. I, I, could, well, I could walk away. I could financially afford to walk away. It's teachers in these schools that are suffering. And, I'm, I, and I mean suffering. And they can't walk away. And I believe she's right. Some of you can't walk away right now. But that doesn't mean you can't plan to walk away. And I think so many are paralyzed by a paycheck that we don't even do this necessary steps to make the plan. Because when I left, I didn't have a platform, but I planned. Matter of fact, my husband and I were actually trying to have children. And I had a very difficult time getting pregnant. Um, I lost my first child children. It was actually um, a set of twins and it probably had to do with stress as well. But by the time I got pregnant the second time, for those nine months, we planned for me to get out of there. And I thought I was just going to go home and be a stay at home mom. But <laughs> what I realized, I am a mama and a teacher. And that's kind of how I eventually started my school is because I miss being in the education arena. I did not miss it how it was. And I knew I couldn't go back to the way that it was and just kind of with my husband's help and a lot of prayers, I was able to open the school. So for you teachers who feel like there is no hope, there is some hope, but you have to surround yourself in a community of people who can help you along, who can give you advice and you have to have the courage to step out and you have to have the courage to make the first step. And the first step is not to leave your job, but the first step is to sit down and say, what do I need to do or how much money do I need to make in order to make up if I do leave my job? And what I've realized or have seen is that a lot of teachers are just paralyzed that they don't even take the first step because it seems so monumental. But we have to get courage. We have to get a lot more teachers who are courageous enough to step out and to leave the system so that the system can change and be what it needs to be, not only for teachers, but the students that they do serve. Another part really resonated with me um, is when she was talking about admin and how they don't care. Something has got to give. These schools are out of control. Y'all losing good teachers and y'all don't care. They don't care. The people that have the power to change things, y'all work and live in marble buildings every day, all day. How can you relate to the common man? You can't. You can't. It don't affect you financially, so you don't care. It don't affect you financially, so you don't care. But what I'm telling you is, your teachers are your teachers across these United States are out here struggling and suffering, and y'all don't give a damn. It doesn't affect them financially, nor does it affect them emotionally <laughs> or physically, but it does us. And that's the common theme. And I, I, I think that is like where my heart has been hurting recently when I am hearing all of these stories of teachers. Like you see people hailing teachers in the hospital are still great and stuff. Really? You on a hospital bed with COVID and you still great and stuff. Man, listen. I, you know what? I'm just going to leave that right there. You guys, when there's a system that does not care about you, there has to be radical change. There has to be radical change. And right now, it seems like the only radical thing that teachers can do is up and walk out of the school system. That's it. And now it may hurt for a little bit, but I promise you, it will eventually work itself out. And the thing that she was saying about admin and parents and all of that being afraid of children, yes, right? But until parents wake up and start really realizing 
their power and the part that they play in this. And then until admin really be honest, especially now you guys know special education is my wheelhouse. It is my jam. But what she says next in her video resonated with me so much and I want to speak on it. Listen to this. It don't matter how good your classroom management is, don't matter how good your relationships are, if kids know they don't have no consequences to their actions, oh baby, they're going to do the fool. Which is what a lot of these kids are doing because y'all make excuses for them. I sat in a freaking IEP meeting with a parent and she blamed us for everything. Ma'am, your child is sitting here asleep right next to you. If he sleeps sitting here next to you, what the hell you think he doing here in my class? He, he's, all these people are here from county office and here for him. He's sleep. <laughs> so everything she said is truth. And I have nothing against that. But as an advocate, and I don't really want to say but because they said that erases everything else out, right? You guys know I'm a fierce advocate for children in special education, but I am also for being real and being real realistic. And those things that she said, listen, that's what drove me out of the classroom because you have parents who, like any loving parents, they love their child to life and for them, especially when they are tagged with some type of learning difference, they ignore it. See that child that she was talking about? I've seen it, but I feel sorry for the child too because that child did not wake up and say, oh, um, I'm gonna start school and I'm just gonna be lethargic and I'm just gonna go to sleep. That happens. It's a, called a term called learn helplessness. That's a term that a child who has a learning difference develops over time when they keep meeting a school system who does not educate them appropriately. When they have parents who do not in time enough realize that the education system is not educating them appropriately. So they get up and get dressed and go to a place every day where they feel inadequate, right? And then one day they just says, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I give up. And so their little brain won't even function. So they just go to school. They sit in that teacher's classroom and they go to sleep and they don't do anything. And sometimes they can be the sweetest kids in the world. So I know that parent and that parent drives me up the freaking wall. And to be real honest with you guys, it is that parent that I pray. I'm like, God, help me to be real and to be honest and to tell this parent that they are probably even more than the school district half more than the school district more than half that child's problem i don't even know what i say it because they have the power but they allow the system to keep passing their child along you will not believe how many parents how many parents just stay in denial? And once again, this is coming from somebody who understands or who empathizes where the denial comes from, right? And I wholeheartedly understand it. And I, it's a process, but parents can't keep their, head, their heads in the sand. And you have to be fighting that district in the right way. So many parents fight in the wrong way. You know, just like that parent, they want to blame the school district. No, boo-boo, your son or daughter did not just wake up one day and start sleeping in classroom. He had a steady decline like this. And you didn't say anything until he hit rock bottom. Now you want to blame teachers who he presently had, who had, who had nothing to do with when he was on this decline. They just met him now that he's at rock bottom. And the sad part is it doesn't have to be. Parents have to wake up and to realize, just like teachers are realizing that that current system may not be for them, that current system may not be for your child. And you have the power, even, even if you are low income, I feel like if people in the community get together and meet the needs of their community, there could be a place for this child. Now, I can get some of these, you know, parents wouldn't want this particular child, you know, going to an alternative setting um, that looks like, well, a lot of behaviors and all of that good stuff. And I get it. Because, see, this probably is a nice, sweet kid who don't say nothing. He don't do nothing. He just does. Like a sack of potatoes. I have seen them. And I don't mind working with them. And that's the thing. Parents and teachers need to get together and be the solution to each other's problem. That baby right now, if you live where I live, come on, 
Come on where I can determine what the curriculum looks like. Come on where I can sit down and talk to you. Come on where I can help inspire you and motivate you. And I don't have to beat you over the head with books, but work with you, build that relationship with you, help you to understand that you can learn and get you back to a place where you come to school looking to do what you're supposed to do, which is learn. But when you constantly have a child going to a school system, where the teacher has 30 kids in the room and five or six or eight of them are throwing chairs at each other, throwing books at each other. Then you got, you know, the teacher can't do that. Y'all, it is sad all the way around. And the, I don't think there is any one solution. I think it's multifaceted, but I do know one of the solutions is for parents to stop blaming, empower yourself, get with other teachers who no longer want to be in those environments, but still wholeheartedly wants to teach your child. And here's the kicker. There are teachers who want to work with those behavior challenge kids. One of the teachers who reached out to me was like, listen, I, they always gave me the look BD boys anyway. I like them. I got a good relationship with them. Think about pulling that teacher out. Of the, of the out of the school system, creating an environment where she can work with those students the way that she knows that they need to be worked with. I did it. I have done it. I am doing it. And it works. I had one of those BD students. And although I'm not, hey, although they are not my assignment, like five or six of them at one time, but I definitely have had a couple in my environment. And do you know what works? building that relationship, taking the stress off of them and making compromises. They don't like authoritative figures. I get it. And I don't have to, I don't have to make you, I inspire you. But a teacher can't do that in a public setting because they can't absorb all of those behaviors. They can't even say, you know what? You, you're not doing right today. Go sit over there in that corner, which I say all the time. And at some point, when they realize all the other classmates is having fun, then they want to come in and join in. I've seen kids do such miraculous transformations in my environment, but it's because I also do a lot of things that teachers cannot do in the regular ed setting or in the public setting. So once again, guys, if you made it to the end of this video and you're a teacher, connect with me on in our Facebook group teachers interested in starting their own schools that is one of the solutions if you're a parent who made it all the way to the end connect in that same group i have teachers right now from so many different states in the united states who are looking to start their own school but they need you they need parents they need they they can't just build it and expect for you to come because they don't have that type of money but if you come then you're going to have influence over other parents. You guys work together. Get that teacher the amount of money she needs to survive. Go to some of your local churches and say, hey, we need a meet in place. You guys, we can make this work and we can have a transformation in the educational system and everybody can get what they need. I'm going to go on the record and say this. More poor kids need this type of education. Why? Because there are so many things that they may not be exposed to at home that when they come to me, I can expose it to them. And once again, y'all, I know it sounds like so far-fetched, but I'm a prime example. I am not rich. I don't serve kids who are rich, but what I have been successful so far in doing and getting just enough parents who said, this is not working for my child, Miss Lumpkin, what do we need to do to support you? Some of you live in states where they will actually give you your child's special education money, not literally in your hand, but if you go into private settings, you can pull some of that money out and take to that private setting. Now, will the other things need to be put in place? Yes, but once again, it can be done, but parents and teachers who see the need need to come together. Well, listen, that is all for right now. 
I hope I know this is a little bit different and I hope it resonates with you guys. If it does, please leave a comment below and thank you for following me on this journey. Honest teacher vibe, thank you so much for what you're doing. Man, I, I want to be your bestie, honey. You can be my teacher bestie. How about that? All right. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Until next time. Bye.